I'm talking with uh, Roxana Khan, who's up here to do some uh, storytelling for the Durham Festival, the Durham Words Aloud Festival. Uh, Roxana, you've written seven books. Seven, and yeah, and four more coming out four within on the, the way. next two years. Yeah, yeah, so a total of eleven. How did it all start? How did you get involved in? Uh, it started, I guess, with a dream when I was a kid. Uh, with when I grew up in Dundas, Ontario, which is a really small town. In my family, we were the only Pakistani Muslim family in the whole town. And during the 60s, it was brutal. The racism was in your face. And not even just for us kids, it was also for my parents and stuff. Like my father used to work as a tool and die maker, and they used to call him Black Bastard right to his face. They wouldn't call him his name, they would call him that. And so with me, books in school were, were my refuge. That's where I really kind of forgot about all my, the bullying and all the problems that I had. So to grow up to become an author was my dream. And I had a really supportive teacher in grade eight. He told me that I should become an author. And he wrote me this long note. And I just thought, I can't be an author because authors are white and they're from England and America. That's because back then in the 70s, that's where we got our books from. Even Farley Mowat and Ella Montgomery, which were the, who were the two Canadian authors I could name, they both were published in the States and their books came back to us. So I thought I couldn't do it, but I started to dream about it. And I tried, with, I tried writing a book when I was 16, and it actually got sent to a New York publisher friend of, a friend of mine, at, well, of the, the guy I worked for. I used to clean houses, and he was an English professor from McMaster University, and he sent it. And I thought, wow, I'm going to get published. Uh, no, I got rejection letters. And I thought, yeah, see, I can't do it. So what I did was I actually went into a career choice of becoming a biological chemical technician. And I graduated from Seneca College as a biochemical technician. I graduated at the top of my class, um, but I was like the last one to get a job. If I'd become a successful biochemical technician, I probably wouldn't be an author today. Uh, I was at the top of my class, I graduated, but I was like the last person to get a job. Uh, I would go, I would ace the phone interview, but once it came time to go and meet the person, they would look at me and they'd say, I'm sorry, the job has been filled. And there was nothing I could do about it. This and must be the most exhausting process. It was really, really hard. I felt yeah. at, at the time that my whole, those two years had been wasted. I don't feel like that anymore. I think they were growing, growing periods. I had to try other things. Um, I didn't go to the writing because I really thought, didn't think I could make it. And, but over the years, I kept writing. I kept writing for children. I kept writing. Uh, I did that Muslim, that Fajr story that I read in, in this piece. And I kept dreaming about it. And then about 20 years ago, my husband, he's like Mr. Organization, he bought me a desk. So I was putting my stuff in there, and I found the old story that I had written called Waldo the Worm. And I thought, oh, you know, I reread the rejection letter, and this time I realized that the lady wasn't actually discouraging me. She was saying that I had to grow up. And so I, I rewrote the story, and I sent it off. And I, I tried to get that story published. I really thought I just sat back and I waited for the check. I thought it would be that easy. It wasn't. Uh, I went to the library and they gave me information. They said, why don't you take a course? Long story short, it took me eight years to get my first book published. I thought I would give it a year. I thought if I don't get published in a year, I'll go back to being sensible. I'll be a housewife, ho homemaker, nothing wrong with that. But after eight years, I finally got my first book published. And then nine years, I had five books all of a sudden under contract. Yeah. Uh, and what did you do in those eight years? Uh, were, were you writing other stories? or? Yeah, I was. I was doing stories, poems, songs, all kinds of stuff. A lot of them was, ho a lot of the, the stories and poems and stuff I was doing were really horrible. But I, that's okay. Like, that's like the baby steps towards becoming an author. And then I started taking some courses. I was actually kicked out of a writing workshop that I'd be paid to join because <laughs> I was a bit of a rabble rouser. I argued with some I argued with some criticism, and that wasn't, that wasn't right. But in a way, that was good, too, because what happened was, what can happen sometimes, if you join a workshop, um, sometimes you can start writing to please the people in the workshop. And that's actually not very good, because that can also limit your own growth and everything. So it was good that I was kicked out. And it made me all the more determined to prove that guy wrong, because he actually said, I asked him if I was hopeless, and he goes, no, not hopeless. And I just thought, he's saying I'm hopeless, and I was really mad, so I thought, I'm going to show you. Uh, and I kept working at it, and even when I got my first book published, I thought, that's not enough, that could be a fluke. So then I worked and worked, and I got the five books, and then I started to kind of think, okay, 
I'm, I'm, I'm kind of set now. I'm okay. And at the moment, you're, you're doing a lot of traveling. You present your work all yeah. over uh, Canada. You just got back from... The Yukon. The Yukon. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was an amazing Home of trip. Ivan Coyote. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually saw Lake Labarge. You know, okay. the Robert Service poem, mm -hmm. The Cremation of Sam McGee? I saw Lake Labarge. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. And it was doubly so because when I was a kid, I dreamt of going to the Yukon and becoming a bush pilot. I kind of wanted to get away from civilization. And... Uh, Going back there as an author, like, well, I may, my, my husband, he's from the Caribbean, and he said, forget it, I'm not going to the Arctic. And so I was stuck in Toronto, and that was about as Arctic as I could get. But, but it's so nice, because now as an author, as a children's author, I get invited to all kinds of places. I've toured the Northwest Territories back in 2000. Now I've been to the Yukon again as a, as a children's author. I've been to Nanaimo, I've been to the Maritimes, I've been to Los Angeles, I've been to Texas. I've been, in fact, I'm invited to go to Mexico at the end of the month, at the end of the month for a, something called the Universal Forum of Cultures. And then next year I've been invited to Denmark. Yeah, that's going to be a real trip. <laughs> uh, so do kids come up to you? I'm, what happens when you're traveling? Do, do kids come up to you and ask, uh, how can I become a storyteller? A lot of kids are kind of jaded. They don't, they're not that interested in becoming an author and storyteller. It's hard. There's a book out there about children's writing. It's called It's a Bunny Eat Bunny World. <laughs> and it's a very good title because the competition is brutal. Because like, like every publisher receives about 5,000 stories a year, and they might publish two of them. So it's really, you've got to make sure your story uh, fills a market, fills a niche. And I think I'm fortunate. Like, I thought I'd have to actually work my way up to writing about my culture. I thought I'd have to start with stories about kids like Bobby and Sally and Joe. But no, actually, when I would send in my stories, the publishers themselves would write back and say, you know, Roxana, your name's kind of different. Um, I think you come from another culture. Why don't you write about that culture? We don't have stories like that. And they were the ones who were actually telling me, no, go for it. And so then I started focusing on, on cultural stories. And those have actually been the most, most um, the best sellers. You said that Muslim Childhood was one of your best sellers. And you also mentioned yeah. uh, one of your upcoming projects was a really fantastic idea. Yeah, it's called Coming to Canada. One of the best publishers in Canada is Groundwood. And the funny thing is, I approached Groundwood when I first started, and they rejected my work. So I ended up going down to the States, and I got an agent. And I was published with Viking for a long time. My l Three of my latest books are with Rob Viking. And then um, with things happening down south after 9-11, I really feel as though the American market is starting to become very insular. They are not interested in outside viewpoints as much. They're really turning inwards. And as a result, one of the things, because in order to make a living, it's very hard to make a living in Canada. So I was making a living. My, my advances were amazing. Really nice, good advances with my agent and everything. But I decided to come back to Canada. 